I was born in Buffalo, New York, and so I grew up an avid snow shoveler rather than earth man. Really, the main thing with farming is ignoring the weather or being conscious of the weather, but you have to be uh, strong-willed and determined to do whatever it is you have to do in spite of the weather. Even though I was ed educated and went to college and could have pursued a more white-collar career, this is what I was drawn toward. Even when I was in college, I used to go around when I'd have potatoes or onions sprouting, I'd take them around campus and make little holes with a stick and plant them just so I could watch them grow. So I had some instinctive thing that I didn't realize at the time. And then uh, after college, I moved out to California. We have one farm in Ojai where we've been since 1998, and that is really an urban farm. We are in the city limits, and you would never even know that it was here. Once you're out on the farm, you just feel like you're in some rural area. Within the first season, really, we had surpluses of cherry tomatoes and some culinary herbs that we had growing. And so we went to the co-op and said, oh, we've got these cherry tomatoes. Do you, you want to buy any? And they bought them. And I went, whoa. And then uh, over the years, we planted a little more. And then in 1978, somebody started a farmer's market in Santa Barbara, the first one. And so we started selling at the market, just the surplus from the garden. And in about 1983, um, BD came through the back door. And he'd been living out in Isla Vista um, and farming on a very small scale, as I understand it, just for his own consumption. And he had a little extra, and um, so I was able to buy his little extra. And that's how we started. And um, I know that he's gone on and expanded his farm hugely. And we're still here, and we're still buying from, from BD and a few other farmers too, but um, he's one of my principal suppliers. We grow about a hundred different herbs, vegetables, flowers, fruits, and we sell mostly at the farmer's market, and also we sell to caterers, schools, restaurants. We try not to do any shipping, and we try to keep it all local. We have a really good relationship with the restaurants. The, the Tuesday afternoon and Saturday morning markets are both downtown within walking distance of, I don't know, 100 restaurants. And many of them come to the market rather than buying food from distributors. Eating local is the way we should be eating. The farmer's market here allows us to have a product from say 70 miles, 50 miles, you know, from say local. We get these extremely fresh products from right down the street and you know, we're, we're serving our local customers our local product. We buy organic at Julianne because it tastes better and because we appreciate the relationship that has been developed from farmer to restaurant. The quality of, of the produce that you can find, the freshness of the produce that you can find, um, the variety and the care that goes into producing it. Um, huge, huge factors. So, um, you know, it's, it's freshness, it's flavor. Um, it's just a much better product, it, it really is. This is the era of California cuisine, which is buying what's local and in season. And so they're part of this whole renaissance of eating that uh, involves purchasing your produce from the locals. And rather than trying to have a fixed menu, you work with what's happening at that season. Farmer's Market is important to the community, not just because of, as a food source, but as a meeting point for the community members to see each other and build relationships. So that's half of it. You know, half, half of it does come around the food, but it's nice to get to know each other. Oh yeah, I love what I do. I feel like I'm the luckiest person in the world, tied for luckiest, a lot of lucky people. And to be able to do what you feel is your calling, I mean, I just evolved into this. I was drawn into it, so it must have been what I was meant to do.
I've pretty much known I wanted to do something with filmmaking ever since I was really young. As a kid, I think I was really inspired by the works of George Lucas and Steven Spielberg. I was like, man, I want to be as famous as those two guys one day. When I started, it was just whatever was easiest, literally, like cutting a piece of cake or, you know, making up my bed. But uh, as I've come to understand more about filmmaking, I, I like to do things that push me a little bit more. I guess my biggest experience is people will complain about everything. Like, I, I knew that, but like, I didn't really know that until I started doing it. Most people get uh, complaints in the form of comments. I know everyone that watches my channel, so I get them directly from the people. It's just so many different people telling me different things like, oh, uh, your channel would be better if you did more of this, your channel would be better if you did more of this. And I'm like, well, that's not really what the channel's about. The channel's about filmmaking. That's what I want to do here is filmmaking. And, you know, you just got to put aside the complaints and like critiques can make you a better filmmaker, certainly. But sometimes unwarranted or unthought through critiques, you just have to let them go. You can't really think about them. You have to just keep pushing forward with your filmmaking. Riley has thousands of these ideas written up, scripted and everything. It's just we have to find the time and place and we have to figure out how to get the camera and get the footage on the camera. Because the ideas are great. The ideas are 110%. But the thing that we need to work on is the execution. The one that's gotten the most, uh, you know, has been talked about the most, I guess, between uh, my fan base would be Midnight Snack. But it's definitely not the best one I've ever worked on. It was an early film. But uh, the one I think I've put the most effort into would have to be Shadowcaster. It's not the one that's been the most popular on the site. Uh, or even had the most vocal uh, response, but I think it showed a lot of growth in my work from what I did with Midnight Snack to there. I, I've seen Riley's work from the beginning. I've even seen stuff that hasn't been released to the public yet. And the evolution of his work is incredible. The improvements, extraordinary. And every, every film I see is an improvement on the last. And Riley is always consistent always improving. UNC School of the Arts is uh, the one I'm looking at most now. It has a very interesting program that seems that it would actually prepare you for working in the industry more than any program I've worked in before. It would be pushing me towards the goal of being a better filmmaker. I know Riley's reach on his videos is not super wide, widespread, but for the people that do watch it, I see their reactions, and it is some of the biggest smiles and biggest laughs I've seen in a long time. He's, I mean, it's a positive growth. There's not much negative in there. It's a slow growth. There's no, uh, no nonsense there. It's a very slow growth, but it is a growth. I, I do want to make people go, wow, that's an interesting film. That's an important film. But, you know, if I'm making something that is just like a cool film, which people are like, man, I enjoyed those two hours, then there's nothing wrong with that, you know? You work hard and play harder. Water can't give you back what you lose. H Plus Sport has what you need. Natural electrolytes from plants, not chemicals. H Plus Sport isn't made in a lab. Too much sugar dehydrates you and robs your energy when you need it most. H Plus Sport only has five grams. Everything you need, nothing you don't. H Plus Sport, natural rehydration.